That's it. That's it. The previous vet just said this is an aggressive dog. He put that one. Hey, what's going on guys? Tom Davis here, America's canine educator. I am in colorful Colorado, my home state. Super stoked to be here. And boy, do I have a video for you guys today. But before we get into this video, guys, I wanna do a challenge, something we haven't done on this video. If we can get a thousand likes and a thousand comments on this video in 24 hours, I'll go live this weekend doing a dog training question Q&A for an hour, answering your dog training questions last week and the week before. We're giving away a ton of stuff. So let's do a challenge. Let's see what you guys got. Thousand likes, thousand comments, first 24 hours. I'll go live this weekend, an hour at least. Q&A, dog training questions right here on the YouTube channel. In this video, guys, with the German Shepherd, uh, this particular dog has been to uh, a veterinarian. They've been to other trainers. The veterinarian actually suggested to either give this dog a ton of medication and or, <laughs> and or euthanize the dog because the behavior is at a point where they can't control it. So we're gonna be going over what is aggression, what is reactivity, at what point do we have a conversation with our veterinarian, should we even have behavioral questions with our veterinarian. Is this dog aggressive or is it reactive or is it fearful? Um, so it's a great video. I really hope you, you like it. I spent a lot of time on it. I appreciate you guys watching. Let's go. We just want to be able to take him on a walk and be comfortable. All right, so anxiety, uh, unpredictability on the leash. Okay want to try to take the leash and go over some engaging things. If I ask you to call him, just call him for me. You want to create a, hey, pay attention to me. He's very, like, all over the place. So I want to create a little bit more engagement with him. Mac, heel. Good heel. Heel. Good heel, buddy. Good boy. Mac, heel. Heel. Good heel. This is your ship, right? Your leash is the way that you handle your dog. So if you go out and it's kind of like all over the place, the passenger, or him, is certainly gonna be anxious because of that. So you wanna tighten that up and make that, that whole ride, if you will, or that journey, very, you know, sectioned off and clear. And when I come this way, Mac, heel. Heel, good boy, good job. Good. Mac heel? Yes, good heel. You gotta take the wheel a little bit more to decrease the anxiety and to decrease the unpredictability in his behavior. It's like you said, like you're constantly doing this. That's where he's gonna make a bad mistake because he's insecure and he's not confident, which then reflects on you for him because when you're out, he's like, I gotta handle it, I gotta handle it, I gotta handle it. I don't wanna handle it, but I gotta handle it. That's where you're gonna get the growling, the barking, the lunging, anything that you guys see. So you're gonna get the pulling in general. And so for me, like when I'm handling him, when I walk forward, Mac heel, and I turn, Mac heel, good heel. And I'm just kind of using my peripherals to see like where he's at. So I'm just doing directional changes now, back and forth. You come out, heel. If he's not right there, he gets that pop, heel. So I'm just correcting him for not paying attention because his mind wandering is causing anxiousness for him and I don't want him to be stressed. So I really want him on top of me. Give him a job, basically. Okay. Good boy, Mac. Good man. Good job, bud. Good heel. So. Amazing, you are the only person that he, within a minute, <laughs> yeah. lets handle him. Uh, yeah. It's really just about the way that I'm doing it. Just grab and go. But it, it, it's, it's person to person and, and dog to dog, uh, which kind of puts us on edge. You're letting him have the opportunity to pick and choose what he's okay with. And with an insecure dog, that, that's not what you want to do, like ever. It's just like kids, like you don't want to go like with a toddler and say, okay, what do you want for groceries? You're going to get Gushers, Dunkaroos, Fruity Pebbles, like, you know, you don't want them to make that decision. You want to say, hey, this is what we're doing. I teach fourth grade and I always tell there's so much correlation between yeah. kids. Hundred percent. Like if you take over the class, hundred percent. Hundred percent. I call it the substitute teacher effect. Yeah. You come in, you have about thirty seconds, and the class is either going to go one way or the other. Mm -hmm. But it's the first thirty seconds that matters. It's the first impression to say, you, we're either going to watch a movie today or we're actually going to get stuff done. The way that you present yourself is the only thing that predicates that. Mm -hmm. You're, it's not the student, if you will. It's how you present it. So if I was like, um, so. 
there's an, a paper airplane is going to hit me directly in the head in about four seconds, right? I also think that you need to make sure that you're very clear in your brake too. So making sure that he has a brake so he knows that when he's done working. Bring a ball with you, heal him, he passes somebody, free, bang, give it to him. Tennis ball, chuck it, ball on a rope, whatever, like really pay him for that. But don't let him make decisions. When I handle him, watch his behavior. You can tell he's kind of like, you want me to go, you want me to do, is it okay? Like, that's what you want. You do not want Nervous Nelly out making decisions where you're like, okay, bud, figure it out, because he's going to make a bad decision. You know what I mean? So you really want to make sure that you're just taking that wheel and you're, I call it grab and go. So watch his behavior when I handle him. Mac, let's go buddy, heel. 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 Good. Ah, ah, ah. Yes, a good boy. Good job. Good job, Mac. When we work with behavioral stuff like this, we have two sectors. We have a, this dog uh, genetically is, is, is like this. Um, it's a lot harder to get in and turn and, sh and start shutting down things because it's, it's genetics. The other side, typically, for reactivity and anxiousness is just handling owner error, which is the easiest thing to correct for me, but sometimes it's not so easy for you guys. Handling with me, taking treats from me, completely fine. So we have to look at those considerations and say, oh, well in five minutes you can be okay with somebody, so it must be something I'm doing as an owner which is usually the case. There was a, a previous vet that said, this is an aggressive dog. He almost said something along the lines of he will be put down. It's on us as like, he, there's nothing in him that's genetic, I guess is what I'm kind of asking. Um, well, his anxiety could, could be genetic. I'm not gonna go to my mechanic and, and try to see if I can get like brain surgery done or anything. So it's like, for me, veterinarians aren't, they're not, they don't do behavior. They're not taught behavior. They didn't go to school for behavior. We've done studies on it to see wh who's got the most behavioral stuff in veterinarian science. And it's like two weeks is like the most we've ever seen out of like seven years. <laughs> you know, veterinarians are, are, are great for, at what they do, but they're science and medicine. They don't do behavior. So they're giving you advice based off of what they want to see because it's easier for them to do their job if the dog is kill me, I don't care, right? But if you get a dog like him or he's like, I'm not really sure about this, the option is to put him down or drug him up until he can't really see straight and then you'll be fine. You, you wanna trust, you wanna believe, because they are basically doctors and they've been going to school for animals for a long time, but they also do cats, opossums, you know, ducks, whatever, and then they see a dog like this and they're like, yeah, this makes me uncomfortable, so here's what I can do. Because I only have two options at a veterinarian. I'm gonna drug it, or I'm gonna kill it. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna train it, I'm definitely not gonna touch the dog. That's their option, so don't feel bad if that's their option, because those are the only two options that they have. It's either falls in line with like a good dog, or let's drug it, or let's kill it. That's it. I've had one veterinarian locally that has ever stepped up to the plate to work with a behavioral case with me, ever and I've cycled through a lot of them yeah. and they're not comfortable with it because it's not their job. I want you to heal them about and I want to walk you through this. So turn again. Put everything, so see how you're, see how you're like this? Mm -hmm. You have two points of pressure. So put all the leash in one hand, yep, and then now heal them around. So stop for a second. Do you see what's happening? Testing her? Yeah, so he's, he's frustrated, right? So when you made that turn, he got frustrated. He started jumping up. Do you know why? Why not, like, so, try to tell him what to do? No, so you're, you're really tight here. Oh, okay. So, like, you're, you want to be nice and relaxed when you're handling him. So when you're moving, don't keep him tight. Because remember earlier, I would have that leash almost all the way out, and I would turn, and he just would follow with me. So if you become tight on him and you turn, he's gonna get frustrated. That's why he's jumping and getting frustrated and trying to bite the leash. So let that leash out just a little bit and just try it again. Build on this side. Keep, keep him on one side or the other. Good, good. Now just slow down and stop. Good. Release your pressure on your arm. One of the hardest things people have. I know, I found when I walk, I always tell when I walk on my arm, 
arms by the end of it are like, yeah. I think I got a big workout. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's normal. But just remember that like you are driving that ship. Remember. Good heel. Good heel. And you don't have to raise your arm up when you turn. Perfect. Judging by what I'm seeing is you have a dog that just needs somebody to take the wheel and give them leadership and guidance structure uh, for them to be happier. Cause you can tell, like I can just see in his eyes, I can see the way he's working with me. He's like, oh, thank God you're here, man. Cause I, I've been so freaking confused the last couple years. Like, so that's, that's what you really need to do is step up to the plate and just make it a more structured thing for him so he doesn't have this anxious like I gotta make decisions even though I don't want to type thing. Alright you guys I hope you enjoyed this video I really really do I appreciate you guys watching if you haven't yet do not forget like this video subscribe to my channel let's do that challenge a uh, thousand likes and comments in the first 24 hours I'll go live with you guys I appreciate you guys for watching I will talk to you next time peace